I'm going to make an enlarged water drop. All right. Now, here is your water drop. And this is inside view. See, so we can zoom down on this a little bit. So inside view, you have a water drop that is sticking up on top of a surface. All right. Now, with um, if this were a solid object, the way that you would draw it, if the light is coming in from this direction here, so this is the, uh, the fact that it's a transparent object is what kind of confuses everybody. So if the light were coming in from this direction, you would have an area up here where the light hits the highest, your kind of point of the highlight. And what you would find is that as you go further out away from that, you get towards the shady side of the object. Right. And there may be a little bit of, uh, so that kind of have a core shadow down in this area. And if the light is coming from this direction, then it casts a shadow out away from that object, right? So I think it's going to be helpful to think about this in comparison with a solid object. So this is what, what we'd expect to see with solid. So I've made it kind of a little bit, kind of a little bit of a, a just a simple diagram here. I've got an area where I've got my uh, my that my value range is just like this. I have a middle value, a light value, and a darker value. Darker value is a crescent down here that doesn't quite reach the edge because of a little bit of reflected light down in that zone there. And then a nice core shadow sticking out underneath it. So that's solid. But it's going to be different for transparent objects. So if I have a transparent object, same kind of orientation. So it's kind of flat, stuck onto here. Light again coming in from this direction here. All right. There is a um, actually, one thing I'm going to add to this uh, picture up here is let's just put in a little bit of value here in the background. All right. Now, we're going to have the same thing going on here with this water drop. If you've got a pair of close focus binoculars, a great exercise is to go out on a dewy morning, bring yourself a little dry sit upon and plunk yourself down in the grass and just look at a few water drops. And um, what you wanna do is as you look at them, just sort of think about them in terms of darks and lights. Um, depending on what is reflecting around you uh, because it is a reflective surface, um, there will be some different sort of patterns of dark and light on it. But this is sort of generally um, kind of the thing to, 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 to look for. On the side where the, the sun is coming from, you're gonna see a beautiful reflection of the sun. So in this area in here, there's going to be a reflection of the sun. And that is going to be going to have a little bit of the, the, um, the color. Uh, it's going to be a darker color up in there. And what's odd about this is that as you go towards this far side where you had the core shadow before, you now are going to get 
light that comes through and is emitted through the back, back half, so the side away from the highlights. So you've got your highlight up here. You then have the side over here that's often emitting light back at you. So the darker side of the drop is gonna be up there by the highlight. And the nice thing about that is it allows you to see the highlight. And then it still actually casts a shadow. It's bending the light and casting a shadow. So really roughly here, we have a highlight visible in the dark part of the uh, water drop and a shadow adjacent to the light part of the water drop. And so what's something that's nice in um, when we're drawing is that you get anytime you've got dark against light and light against dark, it really kind of helps you Oh, wait, hold on. I got to see this. This is Amelia is about to take off. Uh, well, no, she's going to be upside down in this view. Um, no, can't see it there. But oh, it is hard for me to direct this camera. Oh, there. No. Uh, oh, there she is going out on. Uh, we put in the zip line and uh, she goes crazy on that. So, um, sorry, just got distracted by Amelia on the zip line. Um, but check this out. We, we talk about light against dark and dark against light. And here we have it going on. So the light highlight is visible against the dark part of the water drop. And the shadow is against this. So if I want it just really kind of quick and dirty, here is, here is a little water drop. What I'm going to do is put a, draw a highlight with a dot around it. And then I'm going to put in a shadow down on the other side. And here is some background color. That's the, the really quick and dirty little water drop. Boodwing. Now, depending on the angle of the sun, you sometimes get another really cool uh, phenomenon going through. And that is that light can pass through if um, the water drop is sort of sticking up more, if it's sort of a, instead of kind of closer to the, the surface. But once it are sticking up more, you sometimes can actually even see a little bit of light that gets focused through the water drop. And in that dark shadow point, there'll be a tiny little point there of light that has been focused through. You don't always see that, but it's kind of a fun thing to look for. You're actually, the uh, water drop is acting as a lens, concentrating a little bit of light right down there into the shadow. And so you can see another light against dark moment going on down there. You don't always see that, but it's a neat thing to look out for. One last thing that we can put in, actually it might be useful to, I'm not gonna switch over to doing this with colored pencils. And um, when we do it with colored pencils, I'm gonna show you one other thing that you can think about um, in, 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 in doing this. All right, so I am going to, hold on just a moment. Uh, looking for, all right. So um, the next thing that I'm going to do um, 
is, oops, I've lost my screen. Zoom meeting, come on back. I'm hoping you're all still with me. Yes, you are. Good. Um, we're now going to do this on a, on a green leaf. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, choose some uh, kind of middle value of um, green here. And I am going to draw a light circle on my piece of paper. And it doesn't have to be a circle as water drops are sitting there. You'll find water drops, some of them will, they'll, you know, they can make a pattern like this. And the top here sometimes can be a kind of a smear out to a film of water. And that's one that may be more actively moving down. But then when they kind of, the more that they sit in a place longer, then their, their surface tension likes to pull them into a ball when it can. But you'll see on some sort of vertical surfaces, sometimes there'll be these kind of more hanging drop shapes. Um, but here we are with our colored pencils and we're gonna, we're gonna do something. We're gonna add something neat to, to this one. Uh, this one, again, the light direction is going to be coming from the same, the same direction here. So I have a highlight that I'm going to draw a light circle in this area. So the highlight will be on the side that is facing up towards the, um, towards the light there. And then this area up in here on this side of the water drop, is going to be a darker value. So we're starting off sort of the same way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value and I'm going to fade it as we get towards this far side. And a good strategy with colored pencils is when you don't, if you don't want kind of lines to show up in your shading marks, just to kind of roll the pencil around in tiny little circles. So you're aching, making an area darker. If I go juka 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 like that with my colored pencil, then um, sometimes those lines show up. But if I'm making little circles, that is not at all as much of, uh, of, of a problem. The, the, the pencil marks will not show through as much. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker little circles. And that makes that highlight really stand out. And then I can make paler circles as I get further away from that. Now, here's some fun part. I'm gonna put in a little bit of background with this. And for this, because my leaf is going to be moving all, uh, there, there may be veins in it that you can see. It's all right for me to make these lines all in one direction. I also have, can cover a lot of real estate quickly right now because the tip of my pencil, see that chiseled edge? With each little stroke, I'm putting down, see, a broad strip of pencil. So I can come across with that dull chisel tip very quickly. There we are. Now on the back side of this, 
So first, let's play with a little bit more with, with color. Sometimes when you look down through the water drop, the color that you're going to see in there can be slightly different. Um, sometimes what you'll see is within the water drop, maybe a lighter, more yellowish cast. Um, so look for a change in color inside your water drop. see that. So I'm putting just overlapping more pencil here. I can put that in with circular, circular strokes. And anytime you're kind of building up color on any surface um, with colored pencils, if you just get more pencils kind of dancing in there, it's going to be it, it makes for a more interesting colored pencil drawing. So I'm getting several different types of pencils to overlap in there. You can even on this, um, this leaf, you can make it a little bit more olivey. I'm just going to mix in a little bit of red. Here, this is some Cameron Red Prismacolor pencil that is coming down in here. I really like the effect that you get with colored pencils when you have several different colors of pencil sort of sparkling back off the page. Looks much more interesting than if you just had done something with one color of pencil. Now I've got a shadow, a shadow that sticks out on the, the side of this. And um, for that shadow, um, See where it is. There we go. I'm going to take this is a black grape uh, Prismacolor pencil, and if the light is coming this way, the shadow is being projected out this way. I'm taking this black grape pencil and putting my shadow on the side here. And I want to get that kind of crisply tucked up against the edge of the There we are. Now to make this back edge of the of the shadow really pop, um, I don't want that little divot in there. So if I accidentally went in there, I'm going to have to kind of erase that by sort of smoothing out that edge. So there's some black grape in there. I'm going to darken that with some really dark green. Here's a sort of dark olive green pencil. Put some of that in there, making that shadow just a little bit more of an interesting color. Again, with colored pencils, as long as you don't press too hard right at the start, you can layer colors in there. Here's some Tuscan red. Throw that in as well. Now, a 
final thing that I can do on 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 this little water drop that is um, a lot of fun. I think actually there's a little bit too much white for me in there. So I am just going to bring this down a little bit more. So within my water drop, I've got a slightly different color bouncing back at you. Now, here's, here's, here's the kind of fun, fun thing. The water drop, um, if you ever try this sometime, get just a piece of saran wrap, put a drop of water on it and stretch that out over a piece of newsprint and move it around. And what you'll see is that the drop of water acts as a little, it's a lens and it will magnify what's underneath it. So as you're looking through your water drop, you're actually um, magnifying what you see underneath. Um, so if there are veins or some other surface pattern, it's gonna be magnified inside of the leaf. So let's, let's put that in. Let's say there are um, in this leaf surface, there are some dark veins coming down or some other pattern on that leaf. I'm just putting a kind of a, a series of regular lines going across there. All right. Now, through the water drop, these are gonna be magnified. So they're gonna be thicker and further spaced apart. And so I'm gonna have one in here and I'm making it not really intentionally not lining it up with this. The next one is gonna be down here. Had it kind of go and another one over here. So we're seeing through that water drop to those those veins that are inside of it. I think I want the top edge of this just to be a little bit more crisp. I'm going to do that. Sometimes it's a problem I have with colored pencil drawings is that sometimes I just sort of every sort of where zones meet, like in here, it's like, well, you stopped making that color over there and you started making that one over there, but sort of the edge between them is just not very distinct and crisp. So so very often useful with colored pencils at the end, just to kind of come around and crisp up some of your edges. Maybe it needs a little bit of crisping just in there. There it is, the great big old water drop. And it's doing its magnifying. We sort of zoom away from that and kind of looks like you can sort of shake it off the page. <laughs> and we can do the same sort of a thing with watercolor. So with watercolor, 
When I'm doing watercolor, again, my brush of choice is the Pentel large fine tip water brush. I like the sort of bounce that it has in the tip. Um, when you first start using one of these, you'll find you often get just a little bit too much water that kind of comes down through the tip. And so I always, at the start, when I'm breaking in a new water brush, I always just kind of give it a few little wipes on a, on a rag or my sock. If I'm sketching out in the field, you'll see me doing this. It's an old sock on my wrist. Um, in my studio here, this um, is going to work just fine. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we can think about doing this. And um, for the first one, I am going to sort of show you, I'm gonna put down, let's say I had a leaf drawn or painted and I, there is some paint on my leaf, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and I'm gonna come back to it in a moment. While that's going on, Let's put in our another water drop. And for this one, I am going to put the water drop in this area here. So I've lightly put down on my piece of paper where I want my water drop to go. And I am going to paint around that. The large fine tip water brush allows me just to take the tip of the brush. It's got enough spring into it that I can very kind of precisely control my edges and the form. A nice little crisp circle there. Now I've got light coming in from this side. So I'm going to mix up a slightly different color of paint, a little bit more yellow in it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline where I want my highlight to be. Zoom on down on that. So I've outlined where I want my highlight to be. And then I'm going to come out from that. It's coming down here. Now check this out. I want to get this fade. So I'm gonna take my brush. I'm going to clean it off. I now have a clean brush, a clean damp brush. And I'm going to just paint over this bottom edge of this, stroke it back and forth a few times, clean the brush again. And I can also bring the paint out to the edge here. And come in here with clean water up and hit into that. And I get sort of a fade of color. Need to have it a little bit stronger up in here. <clears throat> I'm mix up some purple blue. And I like to sort of imagine drawing a line through the highlight, out through this. And that's going to show me where this, oh, the paper's still wet. Ew, glad I figured that out now. I want to get this, um, this little highlight to be kind of crisp. So I want, I'm gonna wait, I'm sorry, this shadow to be kind of crisp. So I'm gonna wait to kind of put that shadow in. So I'm just gonna leave that little line there for now. And while that's happening, I'm gonna jump back to this little area of paint that I put up in here. 
different sorts of paints work different ways. Some stain the paper and soak into the paper. Um, others much more sit on the surface of the paper. And this paper is still a little bit damp. So I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer, one moment. Now that everything is dry, I actually can jump all the way back to this guy. So I will, um, and then we'll go over to that other one in, in a second. Oh, actually, no, I'll, I'll bounce back and forth a little bit. Well, this, we can do something over here, and then while well, that's drying, move back. All right, so some paints, they sit on the surface of the paper. And if they do, you can often wet the paper and I brush my brush in a little circle here and tap. I've just put a hole in that. Isn't that cool? Now, if your paper is really fibrous, it's not gonna work as well. And if your paint is really staining, it's not gonna work as well. But on some types of paper, on a lot of types of paper, um, Especially if you have, a, a, and you want to make sure that the, just um, you can look at your different paints. And let's say these are from Daniel Smith, and they will say um, what, you know, how staining that color is. And so you want one that is not staining. And if it's not staining, like this um, is oxide of chromium, I can come over here, I paint a circle with water, I tap it with this, and I have now pulled up a bigger circle. I'm gonna put another water drop in here. I'm making a wet circle. And then I tap it and look at that. Isn't that cool? So I've got now three water drops going here. I can re-wet this and re-tap it, it got a little bit brighter, re-wet this one. And I'm gonna re-tap it with a different part of the paper. And if I do this too much, I'm gonna to start to chew up the paper. You're gonna find at a certain point, you start to turn your paper into pulp. Another thing to notice about this is that this edge on this is not super crisp. All right, but, um, so a little bit of this lifting out, you can get away with. That's really fun. Now, while that's drawing, I'm gonna come back to this one. And I'm gonna come over here on, imagine drawing a line through the highlight, through the sort of moon of light on the other side. And here is my shadow. And um, if I want to, I can also put in striations on this leaf as well. Um, let's say there are, um, let's, let's go for kind of a more of a, a, a different vein pattern. Uh, let's see, what shall we do? There are pale veins on this leaf. There are pale veins on this leaf and they're in a more of a dendritic branching pattern. So I'm gonna jump over to my Signo Uniball gel pen, All right? This is my favorite kind of gel pen. And there are veins, here's the main vein coming here.
And there are side veins that are sticking off of this thing. I tapped the in the shadow there a little bit with my finger because I didn't want the I gone it picked up a little bit of that gel pen ink on my finger so that it's not as bold in the shadow. And there are some little sort of side side veins on these. Sometimes between these um, veins you'll kind of get a little network of sub veins. So I've got my major veins and these minor veins. Right now, I need it to be a little bit darker on those ones in the shadow. So I'm just gonna brush them lightly with my brush. And Signo Uniball is water soluble. So you notice them kind of coming off not going to take it completely away. I want it to be there a little bit. Right. Um, these veins, by the way, are not white. They're kind of yellowish. Mm. All right. So let's let's hit that. Let's do that now. It's little yellow veins on this light green leaf. So um, the Signo Uniball ink uh, is also can be stained. So I'm just going to paint over it with yellow. Oops. Just taking a fine tipped brush, not too much water on it, a little bit of yellow paint on it, and just brushing over those little veins. And any that are too prominent, um, I can kick those back a little bit by just brushing over it a couple of times and it starts to kind of fade it out a little bit. One more zone in here. All right. Gonna let that dry a little bit. And while that dries, I'm going to put a bigger vein inside here. and make it a little bit lighter. So the tip of my finger, whoops, uh, we're losing it on the screen. Here we are, there we go. So I uh, made it a little bit lighter. Final thing I'm going to do is just kind of come around and imagine each one of these little pieces of real estate between the little tiny sub veins. Um, 
as slightly, I'm just gonna put a little bit of shadowing in on some of those just to kind of model that surface a little bit more. Now, this is still looking a little bit too fussy inside here. I think I want to just sort of simplify that a little bit. I'm just gonna take some yellow paint and just unify a bit of what's going on inside there. I think I like that better. <clears throat> and back away from it. And maybe it's neat when you kind of back away from something, you sometimes get more ideas. Um, I'm going to just darken the green around the highlight a little bit. Kind of coming out in bigger circles. And then with a clean brush, just kissing the edge of that and fading that out. And maybe one more coat of purple down here. All right. Now I'm going to bounce back while that's drawing. I'm going to bounce back to these guys. Um, so I'm going to have in this, these upper corners of all of them. Um, just a little bit of yellow green. And I'm going to completely cover up the area where the highlight would be, because these are rather small. If I get in there and I get too fussy, it's gonna, it's gonna get funky. I'm gonna clean my brush and blend the bottom edges of these. While that dries, I'm going to take some purplish blue and come into the bottom edge here and draw in three shadows. And that makes that the edge of that water drop a little bit more crisp, which I like. So again, I'm putting light against dark. And you know what I'm going to do for those highlights, right? Oh, yeah. It's back. The gel pen. I'm going to just put a drop of white in here. Oh, it's not quite dry, it doesn't. All right, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. Come on, dry. I'm impatient. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna put my. I should wait, but I won't. And so we've got uh, three little water drops on what was an old green surface. So if I painted that that leaf in in advance, I can still come in there and drop in my little water drop. Um, and uh, that, that's a, that's, a, that's a fun way to do it. Back up from that. 
And I can have on that same surface markings or striations. So just some of those inside those water drops. We want that uh, the value of the shadow just to be a little bit darker. Feels a little bit anemic to me. So I will take darker paint, put in that little moon right down there. It really kind of lifts the water drop. It makes the back edge of it feel bright because of putting that dark next to it. Something feels light because the other thing is dark. There's four water drops. And um, that is kind of a fun seasonal thing to do. You'll find water drops form very nicely on mushrooms. So you can look for water drops on your mushrooms, um, on, on blades of plants. Uh, something you've, if you live in a place with lupin, you um, owe yourself the favor of going out and sketching lupin after a little sprinkle of rain, or after a rainstorm, or even after a heavy dew. Uh, you go out and um, you know, if you, you remember lupin plants, um, to, to, there's a compound leaf, a palmately compound leaf. So let's say here's the center of this leaf, a little bit off center from this circle. And the lupin has these uh, leaves that will radiate out. You want to count how many, how many it has, because different species will, within a species, there will be, there's variation, but some species will they'll tend to have more and some will tend to have fewer. So there's this little lupin leaf. And what you'll often find, it's just wonderful, is big, surprisingly large drop of water will be caught down, down there on these hydrophobic hairs, these waterproof hairs on the lupin. And so it creates this little uh, water drop it, droplet catcher right there in the middle of the lupin. And sometimes if it's not been like a big rainstorm, but like a heavy dew, you will find a series of water drops up onto these leaflets here. And it's just, it's this incredible little jeweled crown. And uh, so if you do live in an area, there's water happening and you know where you can get out and get to those lupin plants. You can. Just the lupins just hold them like the most beautiful jewels you can imagine. And that, my friend, my friends, is a <clears throat> bag of tricks for playing, playing with, with, with water drops and uh, with a bunch of different media. So we've got pencils, colored pencils. We have some uh, pens here. And uh, see what is, uh, uh, actually, I don't have pens. <laughs> um, 
uh, pencils, colored pencils, and watercolor, um, and and see what you can, uh, what media you like to use. And if if it's been raining, you can now show that in your journal uh, by the presence of these water drops. But again, I do advise against. It's, it's kind of like a go-to thing for Hallmark card, like the flower with the water drop on it. And um, if it's the middle of summer uh, here in, uh, in in California, we don't get any rain. And if you're just auto, on kind of autopilot putting in um, water droplets because they're supposed to, you know, look flowery, um, I would uh, caution you against that. Um, but if you're seeing water droplets, go for it and put water droplets in because now you get to play with water droplets and it's really fun to do. I also, I want to encourage everybody who has close focus binoculars, get those close fo focus binoculars out, take a look at how, uh, at sort of where you're seeing lights and darks, where you're seeing things magnified um, inside your, uh, inside the, the, the leaf. Um, And and have some fun with that. Have some fun with that. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. These little these little lenses dropping out of the sky and playing with light, and we get to slow down and pay attention to them. <laughs>